So we should be getting pretty familiar with digital, uh, zero or one, high or low, DO to D7, there's ground, there's 3V3, and also analog, AO up to A5, uh, analog read is zero to 4095 uh, values, um, PWM, these pins are PWM, and these ones, that one only if A5 isn't working, that one A4. Uh, PWM goes from 0 to 255, uh, servos use that, but anything fancy uh, needs serial. And here's the typical serial is UART uh, using the TX and RX uh, pins, but there's also SPI, uh, keywords are Mossy Missy SCK, uh, and another one which is right there. Um, but we're going to do I2C, and the main uh, keywords here are SCL and SDA, that's a data and that's a clock. So let's get going. High school robotics. Uh, we are doing serial I2C. And at the moment, there's only one thing there in INO. So let's go grab that INO. And go to particle, create our new app. I'm just going to call it I2C. Um, and let's paste that in. Now, uh, basically what it's going to do, it's going to write on a little, a really small display. Um, and, and here are the main things, and students have no problem figuring out um, uh, cursor location, display, uh, coloring, uh, the size, and it'll go through and flash for a second these different things, size 3, uh, the number nine, goodbye, stuff like that. But with serial, you almost always have include files. And I'll show you how the library is awesome with include files. But for this one, I really want to show uh, the basic, basic stuff and how Paul Corrini has um, made things a lot easier for, for us. So these are the hookups, uh, black goes to ground, uh, red 3v3, uh, SDA always goes to DO, SCL always goes to D1. Pretty easy. Once you see SDA and SCL, you know it's I2C communication, and you know uh, the data goes to DO and the clock goes to D1. Now the problem with serial is these things, include files. So um, the trick here is to go to uh, Paul's site and let's go there and we want to look for these things so here's Paul's um, Adafruit 33D1306 is the file we're looking at and here are the four files now what a pain that there are four of them um, I'm going to see if I can copy now capitalization is hugely important so let's go in find this uh, header file and copy it. Make sure you just get that. Then go back to particle and we got to go to this little plus sign and I'm going to paste whoa bad thing to paste. Can I step back? Okay. I'm going to paste right here the header file and I wonder if it has its name at the top. Uh, it's got a class. No, let's go back to Paul's and go back and it was this one so you gotta copy it exactly get back into particle that's what that one should be called it puts the dot h in lots of room for error here um, I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit so I've got my save and savings a little weird with this I'm gonna try control s there we go. control s actually saved uh, you can watch that thing there control s okay so now we got to go back to Paul's and grab the .cpp file. Uh, notice it's really big. And a lot of this serial stuff is really complex. And people like um, be corny uh, have made it a lot easier. Uh, by the way, on, on the particle site, his uh, tag is at pk123. 
very helpful. It's amazing he's not working for um, Particle. Okay, now here's what gets a little confusing. See, there's my header file, but it's copied, I think, the same file over there. Now, if we we're using the library, we wouldn't be having this problem, but not everything's in the library. So I'm going to control S to save that again. See, it went moving. Now we can jump around, and there's my header file. There's my CPP file. Awesome. Now what? Now we've got to go grab the other one. And sorry this is taking a while, but the students seem to have no problem with it. But it uh, is a big deal. You've got to get them. You've got to copy everything exactly as is. Uh, what am I doing here? I want to copy that one. So grabbing the name first because I want to hit the plus sign paste that name. Now this is the .h file and so let's, and if I mess up, oop, I just grabbed the CPP but not a big deal as long as I paste it into the right one. Uh, make sure you don't grab the bottom part of GitHub. There is a better way to do this. Uh, which one's the CPP? That one's the CPP. Strangely there's stuff there. Why the heck is there stuff there? I'm uh, not really sure why that's there. I'm just going to paste what I'm reasonably sure is the correct stuff. Get back out of there. As I said, there's way easier ways to do this, but you can't always rely on it being available. So now I'm in the H file. Once again, it seems to have put the CPP into the H. So there, let's save it and just fly through these files. We've got um, my file, which is taken from Paul's. Uh, we've got the CPP. I just want to kind of be at the top of the page here, see if it actually is the CPP. Um, the Adafruit, oh, it's always taking me to the bottom. Anyway, it's looking good. A uh, little trick here, sometimes if you hit a space, Oh, the save bar is not coming up, so I'm going to use Control S again. It's got those two includes there, but it also has those same includes here. I don't think it's going to kill it having two includes. Uh, let's see if it compiles. This is the part that it never works. Uh, that's why it's kind of nice that mine's here and kind of working. So let's go have a look at this. So here I just reset it. We've got the wires coming out of the OLED. There we go. So, hello LED. It's interesting that it's running before my, uh, oh, my Wi-Fi is breathing. Okay, and there are the connectors. Notice the um, white goes to DO, the yellow to D1, and then we've got ground, and then we've got um, 3v3. So students should be able to change this up, make it say whatever you want, but the, the big lesson here is learning that I2C isn't that big a deal. Uh, you've got a couple of cables to hook up. Um, there is a situation with I2C that needs resistors for those lines. Most boards have it already figured out, um, but occasionally you have to have a pull-up resistor. So uh, be aware of that. Uh, reminder, these things to set, you clear the display, you show the display, you say what you want. Um, here we go, we're setting text color. And there are more things you can do and there's, there's fancier stuff you can do. I just thought I'd get you started on it and get it working.